Critical Ops is dead. I've been hearing this exact phrase literally everywhere I turn. Every Critical Ops related server. Majority of the players. Many creators have left, many players have left, and some even resort to hacking as a way to have fun again like they used to. Some are blaming the developers, while some are blaming skins. Others say the game is repetitive and simply boring after some time. Whether that's because unique game modes simply don't cycle as frequently, or if that's because they play all day long, it's beside the point. The point is that players are angry. Very angry. But whose fault is it? What makes a game really successful in the first place? And what are some changes that the community wants to see in order for them to be satisfied? We have to start from the beginning to understand why Critical Ops used to be golden. Hey dude, I'm Hyperba and this is the first time I make some type of documentary thing. Let me know what you think in the comments, and hopefully you don't click away early because I've got a couple cool interviews in store for you. August 14, 2015. Critical Ops was born. There isn't much available data out there about the game stats during that time. Or any time if we're being frank, which was the first thing I noticed that is a bad sign. If I told you to name a few random big or x big games, I'd probably hear PUBG, Fortnite, Minecraft, Roblox, Clash of Clans, and guess what? These games all have their game stats data available for anyone curious because these are actual games that were successful from the start. But hold on right there, I'm not saying that Critical Ops is a bad game, it's just something that I think is worth pointing out, and that you shouldn't have crazy expectations. The game wasn't made to dominate the FPS scene, it's one of the countless similar FPS games out there where you can either play deathmatch or defuse slash plant a bomb. Like the original, CSGO, which was published on 2012, being the earliest with this concept. And before you tell me that CSGO copied Valorant, no, Valorant was published 8 years later, dude. I do not know why there's a forum out there talking about this. And when you have tons of games that are so similar for a mobile version, it's not like they're going to immediately blow up in success. During the golden era, or the period of time where Critical Ops was thriving, 2017 to 2019, it was quite a popular game. The competitive scene was blooming. Critical Ops had many tourneys going on for big cash prizes. Content creators like Ulzema got millions of views on their trolling montages, and no one ever complained that the game was dead. But that was like 6 years ago. What exactly changed and what makes a game successful in the first place, or at least keeps it successful? According to my research, there's three things. Regular good updates, a strong community, and responsive developer support. Games can lose popularity and become dead due to lack of updates, poor community management, technical issues, or the emergence of more appealing alternatives, aka competitors. Additionally, a game can become dead if it fails to adapt to changing player preferences. In the case of Critical Ops though, the biggest difference between before and now is that big tournaments no longer exist. The esports scene is really boring, the amount of hackers recently has skyrocketed. The content scene is completely dead and super stale. The developer-player relationship, if we're being honest, just isn't the best. Four things, and I'm no specialist on any of them, but lucky me I was able to talk to experts in each field and hear what they have got to say. I want to start this off by asking uh, what exactly are the biggest differences like between the esports scene from before to now, in your opinion? Because I mean, you have experience, you saw it and how it changed. So, what is like the biggest difference between before and now? Back then, the we had big tournaments and big organizations sponsoring teams and tournaments, uh, such as Valiance, for example. These were organizations outside the games. They were they would sponsor different games, you know. And the thing that runs a, compet a competitive scenario is money and fame. And Critical yeah. Ops would have a lot of those two aspects back in the old days. How's it going? Been some, been a while since we last talked. <laughs> hello, hello. How are you? I'm doing fantastic. Dude. Thank you for asking. And you? 
Yeah, me too. So, like, do you think you know why there are so many hackers nowadays than, I don't know, a few years ago? I mean, the, the quality of the cheats have just improved. I, I have been saying this for a long time. The anti-cheat is not improving. That's why people are, like, they're able to hack. So basically you're saying because the hacks are just, the quality of hacks nowadays is just getting better and better and unfortunately the anti-cheat is not improving, or at least in your opinion. Yeah. So how big of a role does the content scene of a game play in keeping the game relevant, in your opinion? In my opinion, really big. Like it's one of the biggest roles uh, there is. Content creation is is something that will enable people to to watch other people play the game, and uh, it will reach out like people that maybe would have never heard of the game. Uh, it's like free publicity actually for the game. You know what I mean? Why do you think many players aren't happy with the latest updates? You know, the recent updates. People are always complaining. So can you comment on that? I guess the upcoming 1.1.44 just has quite a bit of stuff that isn't necessarily just wasn't asked for. For example, the new player model, like, I guess it's fine that they added something new, but there wasn't anything that urgent to be changed. Or the enemy outline uh, indicators, mm -hmm. uh, the enemy indi indicators are used in games that are high quality. As if they're realistic or hard to see the enemies, in which uh, none of those things create corpses. Yeah, I totally get it. So, so far you're basically saying that the updates are like, they don't have much of a use, if I understand you right. Give me a moment to say something real quick. This video might seem quite critical and totally negative, but this is completely based off of opinions from other people, so don't just follow the crowd. I personally believe the game is still a pretty good one, and since I still play it from time to time, and you do too, I'm pretty sure that it's not dead, right? Also, at the beginning, I don't know what I was smoking when I said that it's a bad sign if stats history isn't available. It's not necessarily a very bad sign at all. And if you're looking for dopamine hits and stuff, check out my other videos because the rest is just short interviews. But hey, you might actually find them quite informative and interesting. In a nutshell, if you could like, you know, say it in one sentence, what exactly changed from back then to now? Well, um, I think the main issue was the money. There were tournaments in the game, okay? Big tournaments. Yeah. And there, as they would like money, because they didn't have the viewership they desire, so, um, they would like cut some price pools, and players were not uh, too happy about it, and they like quit the game because there were upcoming games like Cotton and um, or the FPS shooters uh, coming back and coming to the mobile scene. So yeah, a lot of people quit it due to that. And we, with players quitting, there were no tournaments, there were no viewers, and yeah, basically the problem is just cash money lack of sponsors you're saying lack of you know people willing to organize yeah, and yeah, host yeah. And simply because they don't have you know the funding available has it become easier or harder to hack the game as the years passed and uh, i think you already answered that but uh, yeah what do you think in the early times you didn't need a uh, phone mod modification so you could just get hacks before modifying your phone nowadays you have to do it there is no other way, but uh, the cheats are paid the, uh, these days. There are no free cheats anymore, so people are also not so interested, I would say. Uh, that's why they, they're called influencers. If they say, oh, this game is bad, most of, most of the people that will watch them will say, oh, that game is bad, even without trying the game out or anything. If, if a content creator says, oh, I love this game, most people will say, oh, I love this game too, without even playing the game. Sweet, so basically it's a big role because, you know, some influencers, for example, let's imagine Mr. Beast made a video about the game, it would explode, basically. Critical Ops would become the number one mobile hit in like under 24 hours. Do you think that the developers are to blame for this? That players are mad about the recent updates? Or are they trying their hardest? And what, what do you think? I'd like to hear your thoughts. 
it's a yes and a no. So basically the developers can suit everyone's tastes. So of course there will be people who dislike some of the changes they've made. Me personally, I don't disagree or agree with some of the changes as well as uh, because everyone knows I'm a player. So I give feedback about the new stuff and hope that they get changed, but some of them don't. And just the players keep complaining. So what do we want to do in order to uh, you know, go back to the old days and revive the, the tournament scene, in your opinion, what do you think must be done? Well, I think Creek Lobs should like invest some of the money in advertising the game, because right now uh, there's not a lot of people playing it, and there's uh, uh, there's no many teams as well. Like professionally, there's like about five, four professional teams in each region, and uh, yeah, I think they should advertise the game. In that way, they would get sponsors as well. Because, as you said, we have worlds right now, but like the biggest tournaments that ever existed in Cobs were not sponsored by Cobs like worlds. I want to know what the future looks like from your perspective as a guy that's, you know, invested in this topic. Me personally, I think uh, the cheaters are gonna take over the game. Like, it's already full of hackers, if you're honest. I think like the hackers will increase but also at the same time I think like the game is dying out. Yeah the YouTubers are also quitting, Safari and Falcon. I mean they were the like two biggest YouTubers. Why do you think many YouTubers are leaving or already left? And that includes you. I mean yeah we know you, you made a full video about it. But why do you think others have left? I'll leave everything I, I had ha that happened to me behind. Uh, Personally, I think 90% of the players had enough of Seops, didn't want to play it anymore. Like, uh, I've talked to some of them and they just said I don't enjoy the game anymore, which is understandable. If you play it for a long time, I've, it's for every game, right? Uh, if you play a game for like five years and it's always the same game, and after one point you'll get bored of it, no matter what game it is. Um, and, and for others, it's because of the growth potential growth uh, and I can clearly see that with my stats is after for me after 10k uh, my growth has been stagnant and uh, I want to ask you also uh, what do you think uh, annoys players the most and what can devs do about it I think it's the ghosters the price mm -hmm. with the bundles and the next spin price I think with the ghosters they can be avoided uh, when fighting a ranked game, it doesn't show how many players have accept, accepted a ranked game except those that are in your party. Like for example, if you got uh, four players in your party, it only shows how many players or, of your party has accepted and doesn't show how many players of the enemy team has accepted as well, or just any other player. And uh, what about the bundles thing? Because with the previous bundles, they fought credits, cases, emblems, and those uh, new bundles that have two tier seven skins seem kind of dull. So if they decrease the price and add some cosmetics to it or items that uh, won't actually be a tier seven skins will be better. Yeah, so something exclusive for the money or just decrease the price are like two possible yeah, solutions. Yeah. I believe. Do you think that this is going to happen though? Do you think that Critical Ops in the future is going to be investing in? advertisements and stuff like or is the just is the esports scene just gone uh from what it used to be like yeah they they always say they have been said since 2020 they um do bigger tournaments and advertise the game but i think the competitive scenario and aspect of the game you won't ever get to the level it was I think they will advertise the game. They've been changing the meta over the couple months. Like each week, they implement a new gun, a new aspect for the game, and that also ruins the gameplay of the game. And um, I think they are changing the game for the casual perspective. What must be done? Help the devs out here. <laughs> what do you think they can do? I cannot exactly say what to do because you know I'm the I feel it guy, I'm not really doing these hacks, but what I can say is they 
really have to change the way that we hackers can interact. We can easily change some codes and find the hacks or create them. In other games, if we try it, uh, one example is Arena Breakout. If you're trying to hack there, the, the anti-cheat is just banning us just by searching the codes. And this is like a big difference. What exactly happened? So how did we go from hundreds of thousands of views to couple hundreds? There's a lot of reasons, there, there's a lot of factors that, that made this change happen. Uh, it's not something that happened overnight. I think it's, uh, and this is really not to be mean to the devs, but a lot of the updates that happened and the community was not happy with them. So the developers are trying to improve their game and listen to the community, but me personally, if they don't do something about the price or the in-game economy or just uh, out of the problems that I listed before, uh, I don't see the game lasting that long, as hard it is for me to say. We've played this game since 2015 because it was one of the good, uh, one of the few good mobile games. But as mobile gaming evolves with the better graphics and PC games releasing mobile versions of their games, they're basically just giving the players even more reasons to quit the game. They might have gained a lot of uh, new players in that time time frame, but they, they lost a lot of players who actually watched the content. Yeah, that's probably the main reason why. Probably also because the content wasn't innovative. Clips, it's the same as playing Critical Ops. Even if the clips are insane, it's it's just a clips montage. It's not like a, a, an innovative video where you say, like, whoa, my mind is blown, you know? This is an opinion question. Do you think the future of the content scene looks bright for Critical Ops? I thought it started looking bright when they made the content creator tournament. I really was like, they're do, they're finally doing something. But there has been changes to my mind, but that's just because of what happened to me. And I don't think it would be fair to keep that in, uh, in this debate, personally. Hey, I want to firstly say thanks so much for making it to the end of the video. It's 2.40 a.m. right now, and I finally finished the video. God damn it, dude. <laughs> I recently got accepted into the Partners Program. I still haven't unlocked monetization, but I still did unlock memberships and super chats, even though I don't stream, which is pretty funny. Who knows, though? I might try in the future. But yeah, I highly suggest and encourage you to check out the perks I'm offering because I got very carried away with what I'm given. And so, if you'd like to buy me a pack of gum or a cup of tea, I would absolutely appreciate your support and reinvest into the content. But just you watching the videos is crazy support on its own, and so I really love every single one of you guys for that. Critical Ops is not dead. Hey yo, shut up, it's not. Trust me bro, it's not like we can find online the daily active players and stuff. But still dude, rooms do fill up eventually when you join them. The official Discord server is full of members, and every single person that says the game is dead usually just ranked about two hours ago. This is my personal opinion, and we discussed in this video lots of issues and stuff and provided some solutions. Thanks to Mando and KXO for their insights. Thanks to Phoenix, Saitama, Falcom, and Blackie for talking to me and sharing their thoughts. Anyways, I thank you for watching again, y'all the goats, greatest of all times. That doesn't make any sense. But much love anyway, you know what I'm trying to say, dog. And now let's disappear for another week or two.